Hello YouTubers, this is Triple Seven Die Hard Forever coming at you with another highly anticipated and highly recommended model as I continue to play catch up. Today I'll be doing a review on a Gemini Jets British Airways Boeing 747-400 in their Heritage Retro BOAC livery scheme in a 1200 scale model. I purchased this model from AirlineMuseum.com and their website address is www.AirlineMuseum.com but first, before I go into details about the particular uh, Heritage aircraft model, allow me to share some information about the history of British Airways, if you would please, and it goes a long way back. Let's check it. British Airways is a British-based airline whose actual history beginnings can actually be traced back to August 25, 1919, when it was formed as well as originated from a small airline company called Aircraft Transport and Travel Limited. And after a series of mergers with different as well as various airline carriers, it was formed under the name of Imperial Airways on March 31, 1924, then merged with another British-based airline carrier that ended up forming under the name of BOAC, British Overseas Airways Corporation, on November 24, 1939, then merged with another airline called BEA, British European Airways, on January 1, 1946, and operated under the BOAC, British Overseas Airways Corporation umbrella, until September 1st, 1972, and that's when the British Airways Group was eventually established after the passage of the Civil Aviation Act of 1971 was passed, which also formed the British Airways Board, which resulted in the merger of the BOAC, the British Overseas Airways Corporation, and BEA, British European Airways, consolidating into one big airline carrier, as the Consolidated Airline was officially established on March 31, 1974, and officially commenced operation by the dissolution of BOAC, British Overseas Airways Corporation, and BEA, British European Airways, to become the airline which is known to the world today as British Airways, as the British-based carriers celebrated their centennial anniversary on August 25, 2019. Whereas, the headquarters of British Airways is located in the Waterside Building, which is located in the Harmonsworth section of London, England, which is a village located in the borough of Hillendon that's located northwest of Heathrow Airport, while the airline's main hub and base of operations is located on the grounds of London Heathrow Airport, which is located approximately 14 miles west of the Central District section of London, England, and also has a major presence at Gatwick Airport, which is located approximately 30 miles south of the Central District section of London, England, in the suburb of Crawley, England. British Airways is the national flag carrier airline of the United Kingdom, as well as the largest operating airline in the United Kingdom in terms of international flights, as well as international destinations served. However, based on fleet size and based on the number of passengers carried, it is the second largest carrier in the United Kingdom after EasyJet. As of November 2021, or at the time of this video review posting, British Airways currently flies to 183 destinations worldwide across six inhabited continents, as British Airways is currently one of 10 airlines to own this actual distinction of permanently flying to all six inhabited continents, along with Air Canada, Air China, Delta Airlines, Emirates, Korean Air, Qantas, Qatar Airways, South African Airways, and United Airlines respectively with an operating fleet of 254 aircraft. Unfortunately, British Airways announced on July 16, 2020 that due to the coronavirus pandemic that has affected the global air airline industry as a collective, the British-based airline decided to retire their entire fleet of Boeing 747-400 from its operations with immediate effect as this aircraft is no longer operating in the British Airways fleet. Also as of November 2021 or at the time of this video review posting, British Airways is one of 59 airlines in the world of aviation that currently operates as a certified four-star airline carrier according to the international airline review firm Skytrax magazine and the Boeing customer code for British Airways for this particular aircraft was 36. All right, everyone, let's take a look at the front of the box. What you see at the top is the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal. You see the British Airways title, the British Airways ribbon logo, the computer-generated picture of the aircraft, the aircraft type, 
the 1-200 scale diecast model aircraft as well as the item number information you see at the front of the box. All right, now you're looking at the back of the box. You see the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal along with some other information. You see the Boeing official licensed product decal as well as their social media page information of Gemini Jets. You can pause and read that if you like, which is I find very informative, but at the same time, I'm gonna keep this moving, all right? Now you're looking at the top of the box and what you see is the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal the warning information as well as the item number information you see at the top of the box. Alright, now you're looking at the bottom of the box and that's all you see right there is the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal. Now you're looking at the left side of the box and what you see there is the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal, the 1-200 scale diecast model, as well as the item number information, the computer generated picture of the aircraft, as well as the aircraft aircraft type that you see at the left side of the box all right now you're looking at the right side of the box the same information on the left side of the box I showed you earlier on all right all right now you're looking at this metal model stand that actually came with the model and you see that top part of the model stand that the black pattern the sole purpose of that black pattern everyone it not only protects your model, it also prevents from being damaged or scratched when you put your aircraft model on this particular model stand. All right. Now you're looking at this plastic bag, and what you see in this plastic bag are the gear replacement doors. Please stay tuned as I go into detail for the sole purpose of these gear replacement doors, which features the two little toothpicks for this particular aircraft model. All right. All right. With all that information out of the way about the history of British Airways and how they came about and still operating strongly despite what's going on as we speak, plus all the details here at the front of the box, as well as the information at the back of the box, plus the model stand that actually came with the model, as well as the gear replacement doors inside that plastic bag featured the two little toothpicks for this particular model. With no further ado, here is the model. Let's check it out. There it is everyone, the Gemini Jets, British Airways, Boeing 747-400 in their Heritage Retro BOAC livery scheme in a 1200 scale model. All right, allow me to uh, share you some information how this uh, Heritage Retro BOAC livery scheme came about, if you would please. This is the Heritage Retro livery scheme of BOAC, British Overseas Airways Corporation, which is actually a predecessor of British Airways which was unveiled on February 18, 2019 as the special livery Boeing 747 was the first of four aircraft that was painted in four different heritage retro livery schemes to commemorate the 100th anniversary celebration of British Airways, which was celebrated six months later on August 25, 2019. BOAC, British Overseas Airways Corporation, was created and formed on November 24, 1939 when the first iteration of British Airways and Imperial Airways actually merged together as one airline carrier as the state-owned airline previously sported this livery scheme on their aircraft from 1964 up until March 31, 1974 when BOAC, British Overseas Airways Corporation and BEA, British European Airways joined forces through a merger consolidation that eventually became the airline which eventually became known to the entire world as British Airways. And another reason that British Airways decided to place the retro heritage livery scheme on this particular Boeing 747-400 jetliner aircraft was to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the very first inaugural Boeing 747 flight that actually took place 50 years earlier on February 9, 1969 as this particular livery scheme was painted on this aircraft on February 5, 2019 at the IAC Paint Bay facility, which is located on the grounds of Dublin Airport in Dublin, Ireland, as this particular livery scheme was supposed to remain on this aircraft until its scheduled retirement in 2023. Unfortunately, British Airways decided on July 16, 2020 to retire their entire fleet of Boeing 747-400 with immediate effect as it took approximately nine days to paint this entire aircraft in their retro heritage livery scheme. But some came up later that 
I think British Airways decided to keep this particular, keep all four of the uh, 747s that they painted in their retro livery schemes. And I got all those. I will show y'all that in a moment. All right, so with that information out of the way, let's get down to the nitty gritty and let me show you all the details on this aircraft. Shall we? Let's check it out. All right, now we're looking at the front of the aircraft here on the port slash left side. We're going to start at the front of the aircraft where you see the front nose gears. The nose gear struts featuring the landing gear lights as you see there. I'm going to show you at a different angle later. And then there's the gear uh, nose gear doors, including the partial registration ship number, GC. Then you see the Peter 2s and the static ports right there. And then there's the radon nose cone, which is painted in blue and white. And then there's the windshield wipers and the cockpit windows. I'm going to show you a better visual view of those later on as well. But now, right. We're looking at the British uh, flag decal, which sits right underneath the cockpit windows, which is this little flag decal right there. And this flag decal represents the country where BOAC, British Overseas Airways Corporation, previously operated from as well as British Airways, where they currently operate from as the national flag carrier airline for the country of the United Kingdom. And then looking at the BOAC acronym decal, which is displayed right here, as well as on the uh, L1 entrance door right there. The acronym for BOAC actually stands for British Overseas Airways Corporation, as this acronym can also be visibly seen on the engine columns as well. Let's check this out. There, you see them on the engine columns there, there, and there as well. All right. Let's talk, before we get to the engines, uh, there's the inboard land light. I'm gonna show you as front vision view in a second. But then you're looking at these big massive engines here and there. These were the Rolls Royce RB211 524G turbofan type engines that was used on this particular British Airways Heritage Retro BOAC Boeing 747-400 jumbo jetliner aircraft. Okay. Now I'm gonna turn these uh, aircraft model around as you see the front, uh, the engines and the turbo fan blades through spin. Let's check them out. All right, now you're looking at the front of the engines here on the uh, port side of the aircraft and the turbo fan blade spin. Check that out, perfect, perfect. And then you see the uh, inboard landing lights right there, the dual inboard landing lights, as well as the front visual view of the landing bogey gears here on the side of the aircraft that features the landing gear struts as well as the landing gear doors. All right, now you're looking at the engines on the starboard slash right side of the aircraft. Let's check out the engine blades inside here. Perfect. Spin over here. Perfect. Awesome. Then you see the inboard landing lights right there, as well as the front visual view of the landing bogey gears, including the landing gear struts, as well as the landing gear doors on this side as well. All right, now you're looking at the front of the aircraft, where you got a better visual view of the cockpit windows, the windshield wipers, that's the partial registration ship number right above the cockpit windows. Uh, GC, the radon nose cone, the nose gear doors, the nose gear landing gear lights you see there, the landing gear struts, as well as the front visual view of the front nose gears. All right. Now you're looking at the wing wingtip device on the uh, port slash left side of the aircraft featuring the red navigation light that's displayed on next to the uh, edge of this winglet wingtip device. All right, now you got a better visual view of the landing bogey gears here on the side of the aircraft featuring the gears here as well as the center bogey gears here as well as over there as well. All right, now you're looking at the uh, back of the aircraft here on the port side and uh, right above the windows, you see the British Airways ribbon logo, which is this little little red and blue ribbon right here. The British Airways ribbon logo was designed by Newell and Sorrell in 1997, which actually symbolizes a distant echo of the Speedbird symbol that was first used by Imperial Airways in 1932 and then by BOAC, the British Overseas Airways Corporation, soon thereafter. All right, and then you're looking at the um, the 100 1919 to 2019 decal, which is this decal right here, this commemorative decal right there. And that particular commemorative decal actually commemorates the 100th anniversary of British Airways, 
and even though British Airways wasn't officially established as an airline until March 31st, 1974, the airline's history beginnings can actually be traced back to August 25th, 1919, when it actually started from a small airline company called Aircraft Transport and Travel Limited, which flew their very first inaugural flight from London to Paris with a combination series of airline mergers from various airline carriers such as Imperial Airways, BOEC, and BEA that eventually formed the airline that has become known to the world today as British Airways as a result of the airline's history. All right. Now looks out at the Boeing 747 decal right here underneath in the right underneath the blue cheat line right there. British Airways became the seventh carrier after Northwest Airlines, Singapore Airlines, KLM Royal Dutch Airlines, Cathay Pacific, Lufthansa, and United Airlines respectively that acquired this iconic jetliner aircraft as British Airways took delivery of their very first Boeing 747-400 jumbo jetliner aircraft which bared the registration ship number G-BNLA on June 30th, 1989 and took delivery of their last Boeing 747-400 jumbo jetliner aircraft which bared the registration ship number G-BYGG on April 29, 1999. British Airways at one time registered and operated as many as 58 of these iconic jetliners in their fleet as British Airways was previously the largest airline operator of the Boeing 747-400 aircraft variant up until July 16, 2020. And that's when British Airways announced that it had decided to retire their entire fleet of Boeing 747-400 with immediate effect as this aircraft has since been replaced with their Boeing 777-300ERs, their Airbus A350-1000XWBs, as well as their forthcoming next generation Boeing 777-9Xs, which are scheduled to enter the British Airways fleet sometime in 2024. All right, we're still at the back of the aircraft, and right behind the, right beside the L5 door to, to the right of it is the registration ship number G-BYGC. Registration ship number G-BYGC. This was British Airways 53rd Boeing 747-400 jumbo jetliner aircraft that entered the carrier's fleet. And the first test flight on this aircraft took place on January 11, 1999 and was delivered to British Airways on January 19, 1999. This aircraft was the first of four aircraft that was painted in the airline's heritage retro livery schemes to commemorate the 100th anniversary of British Airways, which was celebrated on August 25, 2019. Unfortunately, this aircraft was eventually withdrawn from the British Airways fleet on April 5, 2020, then was flown to an aircraft storage facility that's located on the grounds of Cardiff Airport, which is located in Cardiff, Wales, on June 20, 2020, where this aircraft is currently stored up at as of November 2021 or at the time of this video review post. All right, now you're looking at the blue painted tail fin of the aircraft, and what you see is the airline's logo that's displayed on the tail fin of the aircraft. This is this little logo right here. And this was the corporate airline logo for BOAC, the British Overseas Airways Corporation, which was actually called the Speedbird, which is actually a stylized emblem of a bird that was first designed in 1932 by English artist, the late Thierry Lee Elliott, who was born in 1903 and passed away in 1988. As the corporate airline logo for Imperial Airways, as this classic design type logo was first used by Imperial Airways as well as the airline successors BOAC as well as British Airways for 52 years up until 1984 as the term Speedbird is still considered the call sign for British Airways to this very day. Now looking at the uh, back of the aircraft what you see is the APU auxiliary powered unit exhaust hole right here and there is a hole here as well as the strobe light that sits underneath the APU exhaust hole right there, as well as the entire aircraft from the rear view angle. Check it out. There it is, everyone. Awesome. All right, now you're looking at the front of the aircraft here on the starboard slash right side. We're gonna start here at the front nose gears, the nose gear struts, the landing gear lights, 
the uh, nose gear door featuring the partial registration ship number on that nose gear door GC the Peter tubes the static port the uh, radon nose cone the windshield wipers the cockpit window the British flag decal the, the BOAC titles the front cargo container loading door as well as the inboard landing light you see right there on the uh, wings of the aircraft all right now you're looking at these Rolls-Royce RB211-524G turbofan type engines here on the starboard side the, the engine comes right there as well as the BOAC titles which means British Overseas Airways Corporation there Now you're looking at this wingtip device uh, that's on displayed on the uh, starboard slash right side of the aircraft along with the green navigation light that's uh, displayed next to the uh, winglet wingtip device. Now you got a better visual view of the landing bogey gears here on the starboard side featuring the landing gear struts right here as well as the landing gear doors. You also get the center bogey gears on this side of the aircraft as well. All right, now you're looking at the back of the aircraft here, and then by the bottom part here, you see the uh, rear cargo container loading door right here, the AFT bolt bin door, the Boeing 747 decal, the 1919 to 2019 decal, the British Airways uh, ribbon logo right here, the British Airways title, uh, the registration ship number, as well as the airline's BOAC uh, retro uh, logo displayed on the blue tail fin of the aircraft. Let's check it out. There it is. Awesome. All right, before I show you the aerial bird's eye view of this aircraft model, as well as the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft model in full detail, allow me to let you check out one feature, which is the rolling gears. Let's check it out. Uh, they don't roll that good a little stiff there though, but at least the model does uh, Tilt the gears does tilt somewhat nonetheless and then the front nose gear right here is swivels here there There and there. Okay, so With that being said allow me to show you the area of birds. I view this aircraft model. Should we let's check it out all right, now you're looking at this aircraft model from the area of bird's eye view. We're going to start at the front of the aircraft where you see the radon nose cone, the windshield wipers, the cockpit window, the pilot escape hatch door, the British flag decal on both sides of the aircraft, the anti-collision beacon light, a high frequency antenna, a emergency escape hatch door right there, the BOAC titles on both sides. See the ADF antennas in 3D. You see the satellite communications antenna. And then you see the uh, another high frequency antenna. Then you see the British Airways 100 uh, 2019, 1919 to 2019 uh, uh, decal. Sorry about that. Then the vertical stabilizers right here, which is the tail. And then there's the horizontal stabilizer right there, featuring a little black dot right there, as well as right there. Those little black dots are actually called the luminaire light and the sole purpose of the luminaire light is to light up this tail here when it flew during nighttime. Okay, so let's check out the engine and the wings, all right? There's the engine right there. It also has got the BOAC uh, decal on this side here as well, as well as the wings that features the flaps, slats, ailerons, coils, what have you. Fuel dump valve as well as the winglet wingtip device. Now let's check out the, uh, the engines right here. See the BOAC on both sides, as well as the engine uh, wings. Sorry about that. Includes the flaps, slats, ailerons, coils, what have you. Fuel dump valve, as well as the upper winglet on this side of the aircraft as well. All right, now you're looking at the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft, where you see the, uh, the radon nose cone, which is painted in blue. You see the crew uh, escape hatch door, the front nose gear door, as well as the front nose gear. And then you come up here, a high frequency antenna there. The anti-collision beacon light there. The hole where the stand goes in at. The center bogey gears. I'll come back to those momentarily. The Gemini Jets logo, a couple more high frequency antennas, 
the pressure relief valves, another high frequency antenna, and the APU housing doors right there and the horizontal stabilizers underneath. Now let's check out the center bogey gears right here. Okay, tilt, good. And the gears right here, that's the only little challenge right there. But this one right here, uh, there's a little challenge there, but it's all good. And then we're going to slide over this way. See the little engines right there, there, as well as the wings underneath that features the flaps, slats, aileron, spoilers, what have you. Red straight ship number, the fuel dump valve, as well as the winglet wingtip device. Now let's check out over here. We checked out the gears there. We're going to check out the engines there, as well as there, as well as the wings underneath. That features the flap, slats, aileron, spoilers, what have you. Fuel dump valve, as well as the uh, winglet wingtip device on this side of the aircraft. All right, since I show you the area of bird's eye view of this aircraft model, as well as the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft model in full detail, now I'm going to put it on that nice little model stand that actually came with the model. So with no further ado, everyone, here is the model on the stand. Let's check it out. All right, fine got this on the model stand, as you can see here, with no problems and no hesitation, as you see it displayed in the takeoff landing position, with the model on the stand being viewed from the port side of the aircraft. Now you're looking at this model being viewed in the takeoff landing position with the model on the stand being displayed and viewed from the front view angle. Now you're looking at this model being viewed in the takeoff landing position with the model on the stand being displayed from the uh, starboard side of the aircraft. And finally, you're seeing this model being displayed with the model on stand being viewed in the takeoff landing position with it being viewed from the tail cam angle. Okay, before I take this model to stand, I got it in this position for a reason. And the reason is, it's the magnetic gears you see on it. It actually came with the model, so I'm going to go ahead and take them off briefly. Starting with the front nose gear right here, which is actually magnetic, you see there. The landing bogey gears here on this side, they are magnetic right there, as well as the center bogey gear there. They're both magnetic there. The gears right there, as well as the center bogey gear here on the starboard side there as well, okay? So, with that said, allow me to let you see this at a different angle without the gears in flight mode position. Let's check it out. All right, now you're seeing this model being displayed with the model on stand in flight mode position without the gears. Now you got one or two options how you want to display your model. If you want to display your model like this in flight mode position like that without the gears, that's fine. Now you remember these uh, gear replacement doors I showed you earlier on in the before uh, I did the review. That's the sole purpose of these gear replacement doors is to substitute your gears while you display your model like this in flight mode position. Or you can go to the other option. You can keep them in the gear down position with the gears on there gears up gear down it don't matter i choose to leave mine on there quite frankly because it adds more value to the model so with that said i'm gonna go ahead and put these gears back on this model and take this model stand and go ahead and wrap up this model review all right all right let's talk about the seating configuration on this iconic jetliner aircraft prior to july 16 2020 British Airways had three seat and configurated cabin layout versions that they previously used on their Boeing 747-400 jumbo jetliner aircraft. However, on this particular British Airways Boeing 747-400 jumbo jetliner aircraft, it seated 275 passengers in a four-class configurated cabin layout. Here's the breakdown, everyone, from rows one to five, which is the main deck, which will be from here to right here. You have 14 first class open suites, rows 12 to 22, which will be about from here all the way about, about right here. You have 66 club world flatbed seats, and then row 60 to 64, which is the entire upper deck, which will be from here to here. You have additional 20 
Club World Flatbed Seats, which brought the total to 86 Club World Flatbed Seats. And rows 33 to 36, which will be from here to about right here. Yeah, about from here to about right here. You had 30 World Traveler Plus Class seats in rows 39 to 55, which is from here to the rear of the aircraft. You had an additional 145 World Traveler Class seats, which brought the total 275 seats. And finally, British Airways previously utilized their Boeing 747 400s on routes from London Heathrow to Abuja, Accra, Ghana, Austin, Texas, Bahrain, Boston, Massachusetts, Bournemouth. Cape Town, South Africa, Cardiff, Wales, Chicago, O'Hare, Dallas, Fort Worth, Delhi, India, Denver, Colorado, Dubai, United Arab Emirates, Houston, Bush, Johannesburg, South Africa, Kimball, Kuwait City, Kuwait, Lagos, Nigeria, Larnaca, Las Vegas, Nevada, Los Angeles, California, Mexico City, Miami, Florida, Mumbai, India, Toronto, Beijing, Capital, Nairobi, Kenya, New York, JFK, Paris Charles de Gaulle, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Phoenix, Arizona, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, San Diego, California, San Francisco, California, Sao Paulo, Brazil, Seattle, Washington, Singapore, Changi, Tokyo, Narita, Vancouver, British Columbia, and Washington, Dulles, and from London, Gatwick, to Atlanta, Georgia, and Krakow. Those were the routes. Well, everyone, this will conclude this model review. I'd like to know if you got this model or you plan on getting it. This model is still available at a lot of retailers, so snatch up while you can. So with that said, please take care. God bless. Stay tuned. There's more model content coming. Peace.